Good evening, everyone. This is A Marvelous, and I'm back. Thank you, as usual, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. I hope uh, you enjoy the other videos, and I hope you got something out of it, because the goal here is to help you learn, and, you know, also we grow together with your feedback and comments. So thanks again, because attention is something that you can't get back. So this video, it's took, it taken me quite a while, um, but I keep getting more requests for it. So here I am. Uh, this one is going to continue the staged event series because most of this stuff that you see in the news is staged. Um, for those that don't know that or are in denial, this video is definitely not for you. If you think things happen organically, especially stuff you see in the media, then I definitely suggest um, this isn't for you. Go back to, you know, your original scheduled programming. But for those people that have questions and are just curious to see how these things are staged and how they set up, and if you question how there's just some things that just don't make sense, this is definitely the right channel and definitely the right video. I also have a new channel that I just started um, specifically geared towards shows and movies. So... You can tune in for that um, for specific shows, TV shows, and specific movies. So with that, this video is about the signs, symbols, and patterns of staged events. And also be discussing what's called the Jason months. Um, that's right, Jason, like Friday the 13th, the Jason months. And these Jason months are the months of ritual killings and a lot of sacrifices. So I'll, I'll be covering exactly what Jason means and what those months represent and how you can see throughout history that this is something that's been happening. But this year, this will be kind of like a 2017 early recap. I know we got, you know, about a month and a half left and I'm sure there'll be other things happening. I can promise you that because that's just how it has to happen to get our attention away. But this year kicked off with um, dictator Trump as president and... As you can see, there was no time wasted under his presidency. He managed to do a combination of things that the past presidents couldn't really do. Um, in just 10 months, there were multiple hurricanes, high category hurricanes, fires, um, tons of ritualized events, mass shootings, uh, and of course the annual um, race season, which happens every year. So all of this happened under Baron Trump within 10 years, within 10 months. So he's wasting no time. Leave it up to a Gemini with Moon and Sag, which he has to accelerate things and, um, you know, do what past presidents took at least two years to do. At least under Bush, only thing that happened in the first year was 9-11. Uh, but with Trump, he managed to really condense time and uh, make things happen. With that, though... Um, in terms of the Trump symbolism, I suggest individuals look at two books. One is called, I think it's Baron Trump and the Marvelous Underground Adventures, which was written a long time ago. And another one is called 1900 and or The Last President. So that's Baron Trump and his Marvelous Underground Adventures or Journey. And the other one is 1900 or The Last President. Um... And I say read those because, hey, the first one is titled Baron Trump and His Marvelous Adventures. That right there, you can draw whatever conclusions you want. And the other one, 1900 of the Last President, is about an outsider who becomes president and he vows to represent the common man and fight the banking institutions. And these banks was written, this, these books was written decades ago. So in terms of the Trump symbolism, this is something that, for whatever reason people want to attribute it, it's something that was already meant to happen. Um, also, in addition to those books, so just to get the Trump symbolism and what he represents, and now this wasn't a fluke, um, there's a TV show that I think it was out in the 50s or something, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's called Track Down. Anyway, you could YouTube it. And there was an episode of this show in which a gentleman came to this city and he said that the end of the world was coming. And he said that he's the only one that can save the people from doom in the end of the world. And he said that the only way he could do it is if he builds a wall. So this individual came into this town, said that he could save the world, and he's the only one that can do it, and he could only do it by building a wall. And his name was Walter Trump. So 
there's tons of Trump symbolism, tons of Trump, you know, um, art and cinema that predicts that he would have been president. So I have to lay the groundwork for what happened this year and how these things that you see are planned. They are orchestrated. These things don't just happen. Um, they're not just some lone, you know, gun people. Um, the lone narrative is also something that's been promoted. So in terms of getting the context of what we're in for in terms of Trump, and how these things are staged, and you can see the signs and the symbols and the patterns, I suggest you get those two books, watch that episode, and then you start to see a context of how things in our life aren't just something that's happenstance, but it's also woven into a pattern that's based on our collective conscious and also individuals that have a consorted effort to put things in motion um, so certain results can happen. So with that, I want to say that you can always almost tell when an event is pre-planned, staged, or even a hoax. Now, when I say staged or hoax, I'm talking about these things could happen and some people could die. So I want to clear that up. There are instances in which these things happen and people actually do die. However, that does not mean that this was just something that happened out the blue. You have what's called uh, sleepers or you have what's called... Um, uh, people that are, the name of the game is mind control, right? We're in the war of perception. So you have individuals that are walking around that have been in the military. Uh, they've been through some kind of law enforcement and they've been through the system in some way, some kind of defensive or military arm in some capacity. And in those capacities, they may have undergone certain programs that allow their brain to be split and induced in which they can become program killers at any time. So the technology that's out is now you don't even have to have a microchip, right? It could even be something that's injected into your cells that can actually be triggered either by satellite or triggered by food you eat or triggered by words. So the technology that's out now is even beyond uh, microchips. I suggest everybody watch a TV show called Nikita that, in my opinion, is the most accurate TV show um, since the 70s and even out now in the last 30, 40 years that completely shows how these things are staged beyond a reasonable doubt um, with the technology and everything. So I have to lay those things down So, because when you talk about these things, people, and I have close friends, people that know the knowledge, things like that, that have fell out of it. Um, for whatever reason, but I'm not because these things are orchestrated and this is a part of controlling your perception because these things affect you in your life, how you perceive things, what you believe. Um, that's a strong indicator of how you're going to direct your destiny and control your fate. So if you believe these things just happen, it's not something that you can get away from in your personal life. This is something that's going to affect you because you'll have a habit of ignoring signs and symbols in your life, whether it be people that's not good for you, situations that's not good for you. And because you haven't cultivated that, you'll allow that. So this isn't just something that's on the world stage. This is also something that benefits the person by being able to look at signs and patterns to improve their life. It just so happens that on the world stage, these things are played out bigger, so more people are affected. So therefore... Even if you run away from it, it's going to impact your life because people are controlled by perception. And the name of the game is a perception on, is a war on perception. How you look at things, how you believe it. And it's designed for anyone that is not a part of the general pact to be looked at as an outsider and discarded because they're not following general consensus. So with that, I want to say that this is also the year of Harvey. If you notice, there was a lot of Harv or Harvey symbolism this year, which also led to predictions and other things. Now, I don't know what the symbolism behind the name Harvey and why, but this was definitely the year of Harvey and the year of bloody moves. Um, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of lives taken, and a lot of Harvey symbolism, which was kicked off with um, Hurricane Harvey. And it's, it's ironic because this was the first time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that two Category 4 hurricanes happened in such a short time ever in history. 
so that's something that in itself is monumental, has never occurred. And let's just say that these hurricanes were natural because I don't think they were all the way natural. Even if they started off natural, there is the technology out there that is developed in order for these things to be directed. And this is nothing new. They have been patents on weather control since the 1800s. And the state of North Dakota, actually, if you go to their government website, they have been seeding the cloud for decades because they have been experiencing high level drought. This is on their website. No conspiracy, you don't like that word. And they have been seeding the cloud to induce rain so their crops can grow. So this is something that the state of North Dakota has been doing for decades, sanctioned to grow produce, to improve their crops, and to induce rain to prevent drought. So this isn't something that's far-fetched. So the, the natural ability or the unnatural ability to direct hurricanes and, and manipulate weather is something that's been happening. And they give you a movie about it, Geostorm, which came out um, just recently after all of these hurricanes. And the thing is about that movie is that it's been pushed back several times and finally it was released after the hurricanes. So I don't think any of that is a coincidence. Before I continue, I suggest definitely that you get these two books. This first one is called Tavistock Institute, Social Engineering the Masses by Daniel Estulin. This is a great book, great book good resource right here and you will see that it's definitely a war of perception and the name of the game is directing what you believe that is a way in which you can self-destruct and kill yourself um, without even knowing it and without knowing that other into other people are the ones that's responsible for it even though we have self-control and free will and the ability to choose um, those things are impaired and much more difficult when you have forces acting on you that you are not aware of that's constantly battling your ability to make the right decisions. And this one is propaganda. And this book gives you, well, the author is very interesting. If you look at the author, this is Sigmund Freud's nephew. Um, a lot of history of how this country is spread propaganda. You'll see how subtle it is and how you can be manipulated and not even realize it. And this was way back in the 30s. So I definitely suggest these two books as a foundation based on everything I just said. Um, between what I just said and these two books, that'll give you a good framework and context to understand that these events are staged. Because when you say that to people, they look at you like you're crazy, even when it's common sense, even when it's in front of you. And what I'm going to cover now is an example of that. Now, when I say it's the symbolism of Harvey, Harvey means battle tested, right? Or battle worthy. So this year is the symbol of Harvey, of being battle worthy. So whatever signals is being communicated, because people that run this country, they communicate through symbols, codes, and numbers, right? So when newspaper articles come out, which I did in my other videos, sports events happen, which are also staged, all the sports. Um, when events happen, these are like Morse code or communication signals that's saying, okay, now it's okay to go to the next phase or that this phase has been conducted. When you put all of these events together, right, and you put these articles and these um, news stories together, you get a story that's woven and you get an overall picture. And the best way to decode that story is to put what you happen, what happens now in the present and go back at least 40 or 50 years. Everything that we're seeing now is from the birthplace of the 60s, right? So the birthplace of a lot of this stuff was in the 50s and mostly the 60s, and now it's actually coming into fruition. So these things, these events have like 40, 50, maybe more than that, but 40, 50 years is a good time frame for anything to rear its head in this country. So things that are happening now, you best believe 40, 50 years from now, they're going to actually manifest um, as a big social thing, as opposed to something that's more covert. Um, an example of that is the Kennedy assassination, which was a straight ritualized magician witchcraft ritual. But a lot of this stuff stems from the 60s. So Harvey, battle-worthy. So what is it, what battle is it, and what's coming up in the future? So we have to look forward to 2018, 
with all this stuff that's coming up. And what I mean by actually working on predicting on what's going to happen or understand how these things are staged, I believe it was 1988 or 1989, The Economist magazine had a front cover um, that said the end of money or something like that, or welcome to world currency, something of that nature. And it had a phoenix on the cover and it had a, a coin, a gold coin on it. And it had the phoenix on top of a pile of cash and the cash was being burned. And it was saying, welcome to a new world currency. What's significant about that throughout all of that symbolism was the year on that coin was 2018. So when I say Harvey, Harvey meaning battle worthy, or battle tested, that means that in my opinion, everyone should prepare, become symbol literate, or prepare whether you prepare for natural disasters or, or any way, financial crisis. This is the year to position yourself, to protect yourself and also take advantage of whatever crisis is supposed to happen next year. So based on that magazine, based on everything that's happening, um, all of this Harvey symbolism and being battle worthy is showing that it's time to gather your, I don't want to say arms because it sounds military, but arms isn't just weapons, but gather your minds to understand what's coming. And it's no coincidence that this year was also the uh, cryptocurrencies went pop. Everyone was talking about cryptocurrencies. So that's also a sign that that issue in The Economist from 1988 um, was foretelling everyone what was going to happen. And look, the year before that year that was on the cover of that magazine, everyone's going bonkers over Bitcoin. So that's no coincidence, um, and I'll get into that further in the video. But back to Harvey. And more on the Harvey symbolism, why this is the year of Harvey, is after Hurricane Harvey, the first pitcher to pitch in the Houston Stadium after Hurricane Harvey in Houston that pitcher was named Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey is a pitcher for the New York Mets, and his nickname is the Dark Knight. So that's strange. Maybe it's a coincidence. But after Hurricane Harvey, the first pitcher to pitch in professional baseball this year after the hurricane in Houston was Matt Harvey, whose nickname was the Dark Knight. But there's more to that. In the front row of the um the fight of um what was it floyd mayweather and mcgregor steve harvey was in the front row above all other stars that's a side note then the biggest harvey story other than the hurricane was of course harvey weinstein so all of that followed the hurricane so all of this harvey symbolism um is a lot of a lot of coincidence so what is it about the name harvey when you see things like this in the media, these are symbols to pay attention to. These are strings to put together to show you that these things that happen, look at them even though they're tragic and we're not minimalizing the lives that are, have been taken or injured because of these, but understand that these are not things that just happen. Yes, things do happen, but when you start to look at a series of coincidences, these things start to tell a, a story and paint a picture. And these pictures are more confirmed um, in Hollywood through music. And they're also confirmed as other events happen. And you start to see, oh, wow, okay, this is something that, you know, I have to look at. Even if you discard a few coincidences, discard the fact that the first picture to pitch in Houston was named Harvey. After Harvey, Harvey Weinstein, even if you describe all that, it keeps popping up. Fats Domino, famous musician. He just died. And guess where he died? He died at Harvey, Louisiana. Now, with all of that said, there is a such thing, and it's all over YouTube, and I don't like to be those that type of guy that discusses that. But when you see deaths, a lot of deaths are natural. That's just a part of life. Some aren't. It's difficult to decipher what's what. But when you see all of these coincidences with the Harvey name, you have to start to ask yourself, okay, there is truth in names. So whenever you see things happen in specific times, you have to look at the names. That's one of the signs of an event. If the same names keep popping up, even in different forms or different contexts, 
that's one example of how these things can be orchestrated and definitely not something that happens without an outside interference setting it into motion. Now, that's one example of the sign. Another example is almost always, right? Or most of the time, whenever you see a mass shooting, right? There are certain traits to look for um, to, to, to raise suspicion, right? You'll almost never see any of these things happen on footage in terms of people killing each other. Um, the suspect never, you'll never see that on camera. You'll never see the victims. Now, with all of the gore and all of the violence, especially regular news shows, that you'll never see. So that's also a red flag. Um, if something happened with all of these cameras and the age of technology, all of these mass shootings, yet you'll never see the actual shootings happen. Um, if anyone has it, please send it to me. I'll be happy to go on camera and say that I'm incorrect. But I've yet to see it. You very rarely see any victims get hurt. You might see some crisis actors hobbling along and fake blood or pretending that they're hurt. But you never ever pan to any funerals or any of that. So that's another sign that these things are set in motion. Now, back to the Harvey. If you notice, in between the Harvey hurricane and the Harvey Weinstein incident, in between that happened the Las Vegas shooting, right? Now, this whole Harvey thing, again, keeps popping up. It happened during the what? The Route 91 Harvest Festival, right? Which in itself is um, strange. So it happened during the Harvest Festival as it was approaching the full moon during that time frame, which is called the Harvest Moon. So when that happened, that's when I started to say, okay, what's, what's going on with Harvey? Hurricane Harvey, Harvest Festival, Harvest Full Moon, Matt Harvey, Harvey Weinstein, Fats Domino Dying, and Harvey, Louisiana. That's way too much. One or two things I can overlook. Six or seven things, no. So that right there is telling you that this is an orchestrated story that's happening. The Vegas thing really showed it because if you notice... Not only did Vegas happen during the harvest full moon or approaching the harvest full moon route 91 harvest festival, but it also happened during what's called the Jason months. The Jason months are July, August, September, October, November. Those five months, July, J, August, A, September, S, October, O, November, N. Right now we're in the last of the Jason months. During those five Jason months, that's when the most mass shootings, the most incidences, the most bloodshed, the most rituals, all of these concocted things or things done by Manchurians or sleepers are done during these Jason months. That's the real horror story is that the ritualized killing happens during these Jason months because the Jason months is when things are harvested. Even in astrology or even if you're a farmer, if you plant, you'll notice that the harvest time is approaching your October, November, right? Peaks in September. So from July on is when you start to sow things, right? And then it starts to come into fruition and harvest during the end of the Jason months. So you can always tell, I almost guarantee you next year, I promise you this, from July to November, you will see an increase, increase. Not saying that these things can happen outside the Jason months. I'm saying the bulk of it will happen during these Jason months, almost all the time. And if you notice, that's also approaching the Jason months is when you have the race narrative. Every summer, every summer, especially since Mike Brown in 2014, there's been a race narrative. That's another um, symbol that you can see that these things are set in motion by the machine that is banking off of everyone fighting and everyone not getting along. If you notice, when the summer ends, your race issues, they decline. There's no riots. There's no race picketing. There's no race bickering. But during the summertime, always had a type. Always. Last summer was the summer of black power um, with the Dallas shooting and the individual that was caught with all the, you know, black consciousness um, information. He went on a spree, and then this summer was the summer of white power. It never fails. And I promise you next summer, the same thing. But before that, before the summer, and after the summer, you're not going to see as many race incidences. You might see a few, 
But during the summertime is when it's at its highest. That's another sign that these things are cranked up for a particular reason to incite unrest. They're not natural. Now, one reason why I say that also, besides the fact that it mainly happens during the summertime, is that, like I said, the 60s was a pivotal time for what's going on right now. The 60s had a lot of riots. Black people were fed up. They couldn't take it no more, and they was just taking it to the streets, period. They was burning things down. They was rioting, so-called looting and all of that. This happened at all-time highs in the 60s. What the government noticed was that they had to see why all these things happening so much and why they happening in the summer, summertime. So they had what's called the Kerner Commission to look at why these incidences happen in the summertime. So the Kerner Report, it said that black people, right, are most excited and most agitated during the summertime. So they noticed that these riots, black people were riding mostly in the summertime. And they said that Black people, because they have a natural genetic disposition towards heat and those kind of environments, that they become more restless during the summertime, so they're more likely to congregate outside of their house. So they were more outside more frequently, and that their temperaments was much more um, uh, sensitive during these times. So that's, that was also a contributing factor outside of just the blatant um, white supremacy that existed as to what contributed to this social unrest. So after that report, this country understood that rioting and black people and racial tensions are at its peak in the summertime. They understood that in the 60s. You could look at the Kerner Commission, the Kerner Report, and you could see that. So since the 60s, it was known that black people have a natural inclination for social unrest and racial issues during the summertime. So when you see these issues now, 40 years later, right? 50 years later, you'll see that this is not new knowledge. So it's not difficult to plan something or to set the temperament for these things to happen. And that is why in your media, you keep blasting and blasting um, these events. Well, if these events happen throughout the year, why am I only seeing it in the media during the summertime? Because police shoot people year round, right? These things happen year round. So why am I blasted by these things in the summertime? And if you notice this recent, this most recent mass shooting that happened, right? With this, with a Baptist church, Southern Baptist church, where normally that's mostly inhabited by black people. In this instance, after the summertime, it was not race related at all because it's fall. That narrative doesn't play out in the fall, it plays out in the summer. In the fall, you need new narratives. So you have to go back to your mass shootings. You have to go back to a, what you see now, your, your propaganda news stories. But race is not the thing for the fall months or the winter months or the spring months. It's something for the summer, period. So this is something that's been increasing since Mike Brown. Mike Brown was the kickoff or the resurgence of your artificial race media propaganda. And I do mean propaganda. And if you think that this is something that's a, not true or a coincidence, I suggest you read this book from back in the 30s that shows how this country first started experimenting with propaganda, using the media, experimenting with narratives, right? And also being able to set events in motion 100% of the time and have people react 100% of the time without the blame being placed on the individuals that started it, which are these think tanks, these corporations, and this government in this country. So... You think about that. So your race narratives, another thing. Race narratives will happen in the summertime. I can guarantee you next summer, you'll have a huge race narratives. It was Black Power 2016, it was White Power 2017. Who knows what kind of racial incidents will happen in 2018. We already know that Black Lives Matter orchestrated um, shill type of organization. We know this already. So next summer, you can tell a staged event because all summer it will be a race narrative. And again, look out for your Jason months. Jason, July, August, September, October, November. You'll have the highest incidences of mass shootings. You'll have all your killings, your freaking hurricanes. All of this will happen during the horror months of Jason, which is the month that I just mentioned. As we end off Jason, then we have new narratives. 
to present us to the summer. And all of these things are done according to astrology, Kabbalah, right? And Gnosticism, period. These things are numerical, um, cyclical, astrological events. Vegas happened October 1st, right? October 1st, 2017. So what is that in numerology? 10101. And what is a bunch of zeros and ones? That's computer code, right? Or laugh out loud, or pillars, right? Pillars in between something. This is all symbolic. It's not coincidences. And the same day, these, when you look at these things and you put all these things together, you can't look at an event as isolated. If you look at an event as isolated, then you'll think that this is just something that happened randomly. When you put things together in a, in a in context, right, in symbols, like a puzzle, and then you put the history to it, you'll start to see certain things overlapping because it's a war of perception, period. It's to control what you believe, what you perceive, and everything else will fall in line. So, like I said, Vegas happened during 10101. Laugh out loud, the pillars, right? All during the harvest moon, which is a full moon, because each full moon has a specific name. Also, what you don't see or what you didn't see all over mainstream media was that OJ got released the same day as the Vegas shooting. How was that? No media coverage. This was in like the midnight, right? With a hoodie on, like he was being snuck out of prison. No media coverage. While all this year and all last year, and not even a year before, it was nothing but OJ TV shows. It was a big OJ craze, everything. Also, you have to look at that as a symbolism. Whenever you see these movies come out, whenever you see these TV shows come out, you have to look at what they represent because they are telling you what's about to happen in the future or in the near future, period. They gave us all of these OJ TV shows, right? Just for OJ to get out right after these TV shows occurred. But we didn't see no media coverage of it. Why? Now, in this video, I'm not going to get into the symbolism of black males and the prison system and how it governs national policy. Um, but I will when I cover a gentleman named Leo Frank. Um, that video is going to take some time. But if you want to understand black men and the symbolism of their role in terms of how this country deals with the coverage of murders, I suggest you look at a gentleman named Leo Frank and you'll see the Jewish connection with all of that as well. He's also not talked about. But another strange thing with the OJ incident was the fact that the Vegas shooter, right, it, it is said that, again, another lone wolf narrative, it is said that the Vegas shooter shot from the 32nd floor, which we all know now there was multiple shooters, if he was even one of them. Um, I won't cover the details of the Vegas thing, but 32nd floor. Now, OJ gets out same day, Vegas shooting. Vegas shooter shot from the 32nd floor. Now, what was OJ's number in pro sports? 32. We all know 32, high degree of Freemasonry, all symbolic, all by numbers, all by um, the, the cyclical calendars of the moon and astrology, all of that set up. So, OJ gets out October 1st. Vegas, October 1st. Vegas shooter, 32nd floor. OJ Simpson, number 32. Look at Leo Frank and you'll see the connection of black males, symbolism, and how the media deals with black men when it comes to murder. So, none of this is by accident. It's all synchronized and you didn't see the OJ thing at all. Why? So, what is the deal with the OJ symbolism, right? Not being covered and it being masked during this Vegas shooting. Now, even if you dismiss all that, OJ got out of prison in Nevada, Nevada, he got out in the same state, the same day as the Vegas shooting, with his football jerseys, the same number as the floor that the Vegas shooter shot. You have to ask yourself why that is and connect it. That's because black men represent a certain energy that is a threat to things like social engineering and Tavistock and propaganda, right? It's just a natural thing. 
But I won't get too much into that in this symbolism, but all of that is, is by design. You have to look at that. Again, the year of Harvey, battle worthy, right? So all of these are signs and symbols. So if you want to look at the signs and symbols, you have to look at where's the moon at, right? What is the cycles of the planets when events happen? What is the date? Because that's numerology and Kabbalah and Gematria. What are the names? When you put the names, you put the cycles, you put the numbers, and you, you put events of the past, you start to see a pattern. And you start to say, oh, wow, I see what's going on. But there's more. Four days before the Vegas shooting, the New York Post released an article. Um, Google Timothy Bates. Timothy Bates. New York Post. And this was September 27th, I believe. New York Post had an article in which a, a man named Timothy Bates, I believe that's his name, who worked for Tennessee Police Department, I think it was Memphis. He got arrested for, I, I guess he wanted to shoot up the White House, but he was found with an arsenal of weapons on him. And when they arrested him, right, in D.C., he said that the Department of Defense offered him $28.7 million dollars to put a chip in his head under an MK Ultra program. I talked about that before. So that's not me making this up. He said he had a chip in his head. He said that he was getting headaches and convulsions. That's what he claims when he was arrested. And he said that he was seeking help for these convulsions, right? Because there was increasing in pain, but he got arrested. And they said that he was in a series of uh, mental situations, mental illness is what they claimed he had. And he was arrested. So this man that worked for the police department, because remember, these killings, whether it's your local news or whether it's these mass shooters, I guarantee you they were through military, they were through the police department, or they were on drugs, period. That is the MO. So those are the patterns. So when you see these events, look for these three things. Were they on drugs? Were they in the military? Were they a police officer? One of those three is almost guaranteed. And the reason why drugs are significant is because drugs is the conduit for mind control. Drugs are used. One form of method that the military uses and these warp scientists use when they're in these institutions to put a person under mind control and then indoctrinate them with sayings or to read certain patterns. So when they see these patterns or see these sayings or hear these things, they act on it, and they have orders to carry out whatever it is they was programmed to do. So drugs induce, put you under, or they open up um, your mind for the program that was put inside you by whoever put it inside you. So Timothy Bates is an example of that. That's the New York Post. Another example, um, again, whenever you see these events, you have to look at Things that happen either in the, in the recent past or in the 40, 50 year cycle, which gets me now to what else happened this year, right? This year, not too long ago in New York, because New York is going to be a big haven now for all of this nonsense, these staged events. What happened was an individual, they claim, um, because of course they didn't, they didn't show him being run over, running over anyone. They didn't show him, you know, getting mangled down to the floor, none of that. But anyway... Someone, downtown New York, running people over, right? Big thing happened on Halloween because the Jason months, because Halloween is the big energy point for these Jason months. Ironically, he was going down West Houston Street, and Houston is spelled like Houston, again, with the Harvey symbolism. So this driver was going down Houston, Houston, um, mowing people over. But how does that connect with the drugs? A test run of this was given um, a few months ago in New York this year, in May. If you remember, in May 2017 of this year, um, there was an individual by the name of Richard Rojas. Richard Rojas, they actually showed him running people over. Showed it. So he's mowing people over in Times Square. And ironically, in October, the same after the Vegas shooting, um, you know, he went to court again, and now he's pleading insanity they're going on a mental illness defense but the ironic part about that is that he claimed what made him do the incident was that he smoked marijuana that was laced with pcp google it 
So the drugs. So be careful of the drugs that you use because these drugs, um, they induce certain things and they have a technology now to, so to, to kind of, how can I say, in, in soup you and surround you through the foods, surround you through the chemicals and all that to induce a person to do something when they're under the influence of these drugs. This is not something I'm making up. There's army documents and all that. So anyway, that was done in May. Test run happened again um, in October. Symbolism. The same day that that happened in October when this guy on West Houston, Houston Street, Harvey Symbolism, about three hours before that, we all heard what happened. We all seen what happened with Wendy Williams, right? Um, <laughs> you have to admire how in sync this country is with staging these events. You have to love it because they're organized. You have to respect that. Um, but anyway, Wendy Williams in New York, dressed as the freaking Statue of Liberty, right? She has this um, this <laughs> heat faint, right? She wasn't sweating, none of that. And she stays in the same costume, there's no ambulance, and she continues on with the show because she's a champion. The symbolism with that is that she was dressed in the Statue of Liberty costume. And three hours later, this happens in New York. So, the symbolism in that is, you have to watch New York. New York is the key focus for what's going down. Whether it's a financial crisis, which I've been saying is coming, I think next year is a good year, based on that economist issue. Um, this guy allegedly mowing people down, right? And then the hype with Bitcoin. New York is the symbolism. So that whole Wendy Williams thing, if you don't believe me, um, if you look on YouTube, there's a series of people that, um, news anchors, um, astronauts, different stars that had a similar meltdown in her, all claim that it was heat, overheating, but they weren't sweating. In all the cases, there was no ambulance and they continued talking afterwards, right? So how many people after they collapsed from a heat stroke carry on with their work with no ambulance and no sweat. Maybe that's something natural. I've never had a heat stroke. If you've all had heat strokes, please tell me. If you carried on with your work, you didn't sweat, you didn't change clothes, and you didn't have an ambulance right after it happened. If that's you, please educate me. Um, but I think, of course, that that's something because they, like I said, they have the technology. You gotta watch Nikita. They have the technology in which case in your cells, Things can be activated in order for you to collapse. Now, if you don't believe me, if you look on YouTube, there's a lot of individuals that collapse the same way she did on air, just completely malfunctioned. Um, and this wasn't no heat stroke. That's the symbolism. So look out for New York. New York is going to be the go-to place for these things. I promise you. Um, I already told you about Phoenix with my other video with Trump. So all of these things... Um, again, are staged because it's, it's moving towards another agenda, right? Agenda, um, new currency. It's going to be a complete currency economic reset. That's why you see the Bitcoin hype. Tremendously hype. And the Bitcoin, of course, I believe started by the NSA. NSA in 90, 1996 came out with a white paper explaining cryptocurrency and what it is and the need for it. So this was um, 21 years ago, and now the IMF is endorsing it. So this is definitely something to look out for. With that said, remember, there's certain things to look out for to show that these things are staged, to show that these things are planned. The names, the numbers, and the cycles, right? So look out for that. So this is the last month of the Jason months, July, August, September, October, November. I wouldn't be surprised if they go November out with a bang. Um, we had the Kennedy files released, right? Um, those are fluff files. Nothing really big was released in that. Um, and of course, Kennedy is the real nightmare on Elm Street because he died on Elm Street in Texas. So that's the real nightmare on Elm Street. But it's very important that you, you look at, even in the local news, these things that you see, these movies tell you, these aren't just mythology because the creators of these shows 
some of them actually work with magicians. There's an army document. The 60s is very important to what's, like I said, what's going on now. There's an army document in which um, they had did a study on witchcraft and sorcery. I'll name it in another video. And they, in that, they realized that there's certain parts of this, of Africa, really. But in order for them to fully penetrate parts of Africa, they had to understand witchcraft and sorcery. Because that was what was keeping them from totally conquering. And they took under sorcerers. They took under magicians. They intense study of magic and witchcraft. And this happened in the 50s and the 60s. In order for them to fully take over Africa, they had to understand magic, right? And the, the initial kickoff of ritual killing and the use of magic on a national scale in this country was with the Kennedy assassination. That event sparked the orchestrated, controlled, at-will, ritual assassination of anybody, anytime in this country. Period. That was the inauguration of ritualized murders. So if you think that these things just happen, no. That has been happening for a while. And the Kennedy was the inauguration of these organized hits of any individual at any given time in a patternized, ritualized way. Because that was a social, political hit. So from that um, came the knowledge and the practice that this could be done at any given time. And over the decades, it's just been increased, refined, and so fine-tuned that it, we can't even comprehend it. And outside of different sources like these books, the best way is your intuition. Your intuition is what guides you to what's real and what's not. Not your beliefs, not social think, not being a sheep, your intuition. If you see something and you're like, yeah, that doesn't feel right, Follow that trail because 10 to 1, that's true. And when you link all of these things together, I promise you the sources and the links, the factual basis will come to back up what you see in movies, hear any songs and things of that nature. Again, I suggest everybody uh, watch the show Nikita. That is the most accurate of how these things go down. And everything you see, like I said, put the pattern to it because it's not, it's not by accident. Even sports. If you look at sports, right, and a lot of people said I'm crazy for this, Houston Astros won the World Series. Now, on my Facebook, I posted this before they won. 2014, Sports Illustrated had a cover, and it said, you're 2017 World Series champions. And on the top, it said, baseball, the great baseball experiment. And it had a cover of a Houston Astros player, right? And it had the caption, you're 2017 World Series champions. That was the June 25th, 2017 Sports Illustrated cover. And not only that, the Astros player on the cover of that same magazine was George Springer. Now, fast forward from 2014 when that cover and that issue came out to right now, we all know who's the World Series champs. It's your Houston Astros. And guess who was the MVP? The same person that was on the cover of that magazine three years ago, George Springer. Now, if any of you have any kind of proof that Sports Illustrated or another magazine had on their cover, not a bullshit prediction, but on their cover, bold that the team would win years in the future, please send it to me because that is more than a coincidence. And the front office, um, if you look at the front office of the Astros, one of those individuals um, worked for NASA. Uh, so... I'll get into that when I do a sports issue, but not a coincidence, right? Why? Hurricane Harvey, Houston, Houston Astros, and if you watch the playoffs, watch the World Series, all they did was bombard you with freaking hurricane relief. Donate here and donate there. How this was a great uplifting situation with Houston and how the morale is better. So orchestrated, in my opinion, hurricanes, and then gave you a morale boost with the World Series win. This isn't the first time that happened. And if you look at some of the pictures, not to mention the people that they interviewed in the New York incident when he allegedly was trying to run people over, the first few interviewers had an Astros hat on. Predictive. But this isn't the first time this happened. When the Boston bombing happened, Red Sox won. 9-11 happened, 
Patriots won. Katrina happened. Saints went the furthest they ever did. And they got to the NFC final. NFC championships, I think, for the first time. I'm telling you. These things happen. When they happen, they give you a narrative. We swallow the narrative. And then we think all is well. Whenever these things happen, you have to look at what else happened. Just like Vegas. Vegas happened. Didn't report OJ. So when you see these things happen... That's the time, to, and especially in the first 12 hours. The first 12 hours of any of these events is when you actually can kind of see the, 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 what you call it, the cracks in the story. You can kind of see what things don't match up. Just like the, the Vegas incident. I posted this on my Facebook. Four days before the um, Vegas incident, they already had newspaper articles on Google about the shooter and his life, and how could this happen? Four days before it happened, I got the link, I posted it, Google Archives, so they already had the script and already had the narrative. So if these are normal things, how do they have this written up already four months before? That's not a coincidence. Orchestrated. And not only that, with the Vegas thing, if you look at the CEO of MGM, which owns Mandalay, the hotel where the shooting happened, and if you look at the month before and even the months before, the CEO of MGM and the top executives all sold their stock before the Vegas shooting happened. The last sell-off was a month before what happened. Google it. James Murren sells MGM stock in September, a month before this happened. And not only that, if you look at James Murren, CEO of MGM, he's also in Donald Trump's cabinet. Google that. These things all happen. Why? War of perception. You control a perception. You control commerce. You control people's actions. You can have people self-destruct, remain slaves, and your ability to make your own choices is inhibited. So look at all that. Stage event happens. You will almost never see the police shoot this person that they alleged did it. You'll never see the victim get shot. Even on all of YouTube, no one has any footage of that at all. Again, other signs. Pay attention to the Jason months. July, August, September, October, November. Those are the most of ritual sacrifice. Also, there's another season of that as well. Um, ritual sacrifices leading up to May 1st. Because May 1st is really... They say it's July 4th, but it's really May 1st. It's really the independence of this country. So from spring equinox, right, to May 1st also look at lots of rituals because a lot of these things are cyclical and there's more power generated when you do things according to the moon. That's why all your religious holidays and all the three major religions are according to the moon cycle and the sun. Period. All of them. Easter, Christmas, all the Jewish, all the Christian, all the Islamic, all the holidays, spiritual religious holidays, right? Not government holidays, religious holidays are all linked and all based around the time frame of astrology, just like these rituals. So with that, thank you for your attention. Um, this was Signs, Symbols, and Patterns of Staged Events. Remember, be vigilant. Um, look at the patterns, look at the numbers, look at the names, um, because these things are not by coincidence. All of these damn um, scapegoats that you're seeing in Hollywood about this child molestation, Covering up all the pedophilia that's happening with the Catholic Church, all the pedophilia that Hollywood is known for. This is their thing. Um, they thrive off pedophilia, so this is nothing new. These are distractions. These have been happening, and it's happening to such a degree that Hollywood cannot exist unless they're pedophiles, because pedophiles is how they get their energy, how they get their power, and how they keep their power. So when you see all these kidnappings, right, when you see all these children going missing, like back in the day with the milk cartons, Oh, which reminds me, the three highest movies this year, right? Get Out, It, right? Those movies deal with, and, and TV shows, Stranger Things. All of those shows deal with what? The subconscious, right? Mind control and the ability to manipulate someone's reality from a distance without a gun, just based off perception, right? So Stranger Things... The movie it get out all dealing with mind control 
all dealing with alternate realities that's in your mind that's induced by someone outside of you. That's the name of the game. Can you be a robot and a slave without you knowing it from a distance? And that happens through these events. And if you don't piece these events together in your life, it's going to be difficult for you to change your personal situation because that's also a part of how you perceive things. It's thinking that what is real is not real. And that's the name of the game for these events. So with that, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your attention. Look out for my other channels. I won't mention them here, but I strictly go into um, TV shows and movies. And then my other channel, I strictly go into all matters financial. So with that, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for subscribing. Please leave your comments, like the video, dislike the video. Just give me your feedback. Peace.